A few years ago, my husband excitedly told me about this video I just had to see about a magnetic engine that was 100% efficient. I immediately replied that the video was fake because you can't win, you can't break even, and you can't get out of the game. He was understandably confused, and I told him that was shorthand for the laws of thermodynamics. He said, oh, like the whiz? Now it was my turn to be confused. See, I'd seen the 1978 musical many years before, but I'd totally forgotten about the Scarecrow's song. I looked it up, and yep, there it is. You can win time. You can't win time. You can't break even. You can't get out of the game. I started to wonder, why is a Scarecrow singing about the laws of thermodynamics? Ready to learn the story? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. It all started in the 1940s and 50s when there was an assistant professor of mechanical engineering at Harvard named Dr. Wayne Batow. Dr. Batow was an avid fan of science fiction and started a speculative society of science fiction lovers, which was, as he put it, quote, the marketplace of half-baked ideas. Anyway, the editor of a science fiction magazine called Astounding Science Fiction would occasionally join them and then fill some space with some of Batao's clever math and physics jokes. In 1956, he quoted Batao as saying, the three laws of thermodynamics translated from mathematics into English come out, you can't win, you can't even break even, Furthermore, you can't get out of the game. Bateau's joke, by the way, was that information theory was the opposite, i.e., you can win, you can support a friend, and you can quit the game when you're ahead. I don't really get the infodynamics joke. Maybe you do. Please explain it to me. But I do get why the three laws of thermodynamics can be expressed this way. The first law, energy of an isolated system is conserved, i.e., you can win. The first law says that energy can be transformed from one object to another or from one form to another. Remember, heat is a form of energy, but the total energy remains the same. So why is this law represented by the expression you can't win? Well, you can't win, meaning you can't get more energy out of the system than you put into it. Law number two, any real process increases the entropy of a system, i.e. Entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system, or its messiness. Hot objects have more entropy than cold ones, mixed more than separate, liquid more than solid. You can easily reduce the entropy of a single object, but in the process, you must increase the entropy of other objects so that the sum total change in entropy is greater than zero. You can't break even because an engine involves a process and therefore increases the messiness of the system and therefore needs extra energy to keep it going. Therefore, you can never have an engine that is 100% efficient, sorry hubby, and you can never have a perpetual motion machine. Law number three, no object can reach absolute zero temperature, i.e. We can make objects very close to absolute zero, but we can never reach it, which means that molecules are always moving around a little bit, which means even on the molecular scale, you can't get out of the game. Batao's cute expression seemed to have been largely forgotten for many years, and it didn't pop up in print again till 1975, when a friend of the beat poet Allen Ginsberg wrote a collection of quirky laws including what he called Ginsburg theorem, which was, you can't win, you can't break even, you can't even quit the game. It seems likely that Ginsburg read Batao's joke, dropped the thermodynamics part, and just made it into a depressing Murphy's Law type expression that he liked to give. After that, physicists started to use Ginsburg theorem to teach the laws of thermodynamics, not knowing that Ginsburg didn't come up with it. Now we finally get to the whiz. In 1970, a man named Ken Harper approached 27-year-old composer named Charlie Smalls about writing the music to a brand new musical. Now, Charlie Smalls was a good choice. He was a musical prodigy who'd been given concerts since the age of five 
and had joined Juilliard when he was 11 years old. And he'd written hundreds of songs by this time. He recalled that when he was a kid, quote, all the neighborhood kids were auditioning for West Side Story. And I remember saying to myself, Charlie, you don't wanna play in that, you wanna write it. Harper, however, was an odd choice to be a producer of a Broadway hit. He was a former soap opera actor and who had just quit his job as a program director of a radio station to make his dream a reality, telling investors, quote, we're gonna do a new version of The Wizard of Oz with a contemporary score and an all black cast. It will be fun and it will be spectacular. Harper was very persuasive and Smalls ended up agreeing to write almost all of the songs to The Wiz, although it took him three years to do so. I don't know how Smalls heard the expression, you can't win, you can't break even, and you can't get out of the game. He could have read it in the original science fiction magazine, as he used almost the exact same wording as Batal used 18 years earlier. Or he could have heard it from Allen Ginsberg, or even somewhere else. Either way, Smalls was inspired, and in 1974 wrote, You Can't Win, for the Wicked Witch's Servants to Sing. He wrote a completely different song for the Scarecrow to Sing. They opened The Wiz, the super soul musical, Wonderful Wizard of Oz in October of 1974. They then spent months revising it, hiring a brand new cast, a brand new director, who decided to drop the You Can't Win song as it seemed to take away from the Wicked Witch's song, Don't Nobody Give Me No Bad News. Anyway, at first they had very bad attendance and a lot of really critical reviews from possibly racist reviewers and they're about to be shut down when they had the radical idea of advertising on TV. The Wiz, live on stage at the Broadway Theater. It's a dream come true. Suddenly they were a hit, and with popularity came better reviews. By the end of the year, they had won seven Tonys and seemed perfectly poised to make money on the big screen. In 1976, Motown Records bought the film rights, and the next year, Diana Ross insisted on playing the lead role, which propelled the film into big budget land. The screenwriter, the director, and the main actress were also big fans of a group therapy movement called EST, and rewrote the entire script to be, according to the producer, an Estian fable full of EST buzzwords about knowing who you are and sharing and all that. He added, quote, I hated the script a lot. The music director of the film, renowned producer Quincy Jones, whose middle name is Delight, which I find delightful, made far less changes in the music. However, upon meeting the 19-year-old Michael Jackson, who was hired to play the Scarecrow, he decided that the original Scarecrow song was too gospely and revived You Can't Win and put it in its stead. This song became so iconic that many recent stage versions of The Wiz put You Can't Win as the Scarecrow's song. You can win, you can't break even. Now, I love the 1978 musical The Wiz. However, it is, as Lindsay Ellis would say, a hot mess. So if you have the chance to see it in live version, then you get to support local artists. The music is fabulous. And maybe you'll have help with your physics homework. And remember, if someone shows you a machine with free energy or 100% efficiency or something that can go to absolute zero, you just tell them. You can win, child. You can't break it. You can't get out. Get out. Oh, yeah. And you don't have to sing that well to tell them that. Anyway, if you want to know more about the three laws and where they came from, I have your back. I've already made a video about the third law and how it was created by a chemist trying to make fertilizer and how it ended up making Einstein and his quantum theories famous. I'm now working on a video on the first two laws which is a story of an amazing 1700s female scientist dropping lead weights, a shy and troubled French engineer who liked trains, and a kind German 
who had the same stern look and beard in absolutely every picture or drawing ever taken of him. And that is next time on The Lightning Tamers. Thanks for watching my video. Remember to give me a thumbs up. It totally helps me out, it really does. Share it on social media and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Big thank you to my Patreons who really helped me with this. And also, if you want to join their ranks for just a dollar a video, you can. The link is down below. There's also links down below to where I got all of my videos from. And remember, support your local artists. They're awesome. Okay, have a good day.